Hey guys, my name is Sang Tonden and we're here to talk about se uh, episode 3 of Game of Thrones season 6. Okay, so first a little recap. John's back from the dead and he's terrified and confused, obviously. Not everyone comes back from the dead. So, now that John's back, Melisand now that Melisandre was able to do that thing with the resurrection, she obviously has got her hope and faith back and now she's probably gonna annoy us with a lot of like this, a lot of like that again. Then John walks out and then he sees all of these wildlings gather up and they start thinking that he's a god. Tormund obviously is not impressed by small pecker gods. And then we move on to Samwise Gamgee, sorry, Sam. So he tells Gilly about his plan of taking her, taking her to Hornhill since the Citadel doesn't allow any women. So he plans on t uh, getting his mothers and sisters to take care of Giri. Then we get to look at the Tower of Joy sequence. I was really, really excited for this. And I was hoping that they wouldn't do something. And they did. We get this really awesome fight scene and uh, this fight scene was great. But then, <laughs> oh my god. When, when we're about to see what's, uh, whether one of the famous three is going to be proven true or not, the old raven interferes. I hate that. Why did HBO do that? I was really hoping to see that, but we didn't, so yeah. We're just gonna have to wait a little longer. Also, before uh, we cut to the next scene, we see the we see Bran actually call out to his father. And for some reason, Ned turns back. So this really confuses me. It really redefines what these visions are. Are they really a visions of the past, or like, are they something else? Like somehow these visions are influenced by Bran's wants and needs, his desires. So... Hopefully we'll get more answers in the future. Three-Eyed Raven brings him back. Oh, I thought Bran was going to be somehow the next Three-Eyed Raven, that he's going to replace the Three-Eyed Raven. But the Three-Eyed Raven clearly says, no, you're not going to be an old man stuck in a tree. So he has completely different plans for Bran. So what is it? One, uh, what I think is that he's going to be uh, somehow going north to deal with the White Rockers or somehow maybe be a diplomat for humanity. That's just my own theory. Next up, we get to look at Daenerys in Vase of Thrak. Then she gets accept, uh, she gets taken in by the Dosh Khalim. Because she ran off, she's going to be uh, taken care of differently. That she has to be, her fate has to be decided by the different Khals coming together for some sort of group meeting. Which cities will be decided to sack and enslave and whatnot. Now, here's my theory that I think that somehow the Khals are going to be planning on taking Marine, on planning on sacking Marine. That's what, uh, that's what I think. Or, somehow Dany is going to uh, unite the Kalasar and go to Mar take the Kalasar to Marine and save Marine by using her dragons or something. So, back in Marine, we see Varys. For the first time, we see how Varys gets his information, how he is able to know all these things. So, Varys uses children to get his information. He uses them to like find out uh, secrets uh, about other people, about what our political rivals are doing and whatnot. We find out that it was actually the other slave cities, that is Astapor, Yunkai, and Volantis, that's actually funding the Sons of the Harpies. And so Tyrion and his group friends are going to be planning out what to do, what, what to do next. I'm not sure what they're going to do. Then we cut to King's Landing and we see Kaigorn actually, the new master of Vesperus, finding out, finding out various ways of using children to get information and so he now bribes these children. Later we might actually see Kyber use Varys' own kids to like send wrong information to Varys. I'm excited to see how that plays out in the future. We also see Cersei planning her trial by combat. I'm hoping for Clegane Bowl, I'm really hoping for that. We see that the small council is divided, Cersei and Jamie Lannister uh, versus the rest of the guys, the Tyrells and Kevin Lannister. They have a conflict and uh, hopefully if they want to like survive this, they probably have to work together, but they probably won't. There's too much bad luck between these guys. So yeah, and then we see Tom and trying to really try to be aggressive. But in the end, he, to me, he just gets manipulated. Some people will say like this high septon is being really honest with his words and all that stuff. But for me, uh, high septon actually just ended up manipulating Tom. We come to Winterfell. Ramsay is now. Lord of Winterfell and Warden of the North because, you know, he stabbed his father. And then Lord Umber walks in. He wants Ramsay's help because wildlings, there's a huge wildling south of the wall and they're becoming a real big threat in Umber since they're the first one who have to actually face them, right? 
and so to offer a truce between Ramsey and him, he bring he gives up Rickon. For those of you who don't know, Rickon is actually Ned Stark's fifth, last, and youngest son. Now Ramsey has Rickon. So we come back to the Night's Watch, where John now starts executing well the traitors that the people who stabbed him, people who stabbed them being Ollie, Sir Alistair Throne. He gives up the, being Lord Commander and a member of the Night's Watch and gives it to his friend, Ed, his only surviving friend in the Night's Watch, Ed. And then Ed walks out and says, "My watch has ended." So what's John gonna do now? What's he gonna do next? Like, what's the, for there to, for there him to do? He's not going to inherit. Winterfell because he's a snow. The Night's Watch was the only thing that he has. There's nothing for him south of the wall. So he's probably just gonna go to most towns and get drunk. But we do know that John's gonna come back because, well, Rickon is captured. Sansa is coming to the wall. She's probably gonna meet up with John. And then next, and then John's gonna join her and then try to bring back Winterfell back to the Starks. There's going to be an epic battle between the Boltons and the Starks. There's one more house that hasn't joined uh, the Boltons. That's House Manderley. I'm thinking that House Manley is probably going to be a Stark supporter. Hope so, for their sake. Also, one prediction that I want to make out is that there, in the books, there's something called the Horns of Winter, or Joramon's Horn, which is actually says to have the power to destroy the world once someone blows at it. Mance Raider was actually looking for this horn, hoping that he would find it so that he can use it against the wall, but he didn't. In the previous episode, we found Sam finding one of these horns, finding a horn, with obsidian dagger, that could be the Horn of Winter. Or the White Walkers already have the Horn, and that's why they're attacking now, since they have the Horn. So they can use it against the Wall and then finally invade Vestros. That's one of my theories. We'll see. Okay guys, so this was the end of this spoiler talk. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Share this video.